ran into an issue from it. So we're going to now clear this time out and we're going to start a new one. All I did there was just put some flux in. Let's get this lined up. Pull the hot air back out. Oh, I hit the switch on it. And it doesn't matter how messy we get with this, because remember, this is just for taking it off. Also, we want to make sure we get these pins nice and saturated with some good fresh flux. Now we're going to turn this over. I should probably remove this. I'm sitting here holding on to all this stuff and trying to flip the board. Not a good idea. Good. Apply a little flux to this side. Okay. A little more solder. And our hot air back out. Cycling through our tips. We're only at three minutes. And now to avoid airflow onto this piece, otherwise it'll melt that plastic, we're going to point it in this direction. I mean, you couldn't really see that, but that piece of plastic. And they're getting loose. And I think it just fell out. Yes, it did. All right. All right, all our pads are intact. Now we're going to desolder. Apply a little fresh flux. And I'm doing this from the back side to make it a little less likely to want to knock out any components, which would require more time and mess with our speed run.
and we're just wicking that away so that we can put good fresh solder down in its place. But first, we want to clean. And notice how this is much, much faster to clean than the last one, and that's because it doesn't have old flux that it's got dirt, gunk, and whatever else cooked up inside of it. That's good enough because we're going to be applying more. Tip out. Put a little flux down. in view. Get a nice fresh coat of solder there. And pull us a new HDMI. It's a little height so that we're not Pushing into the table there. Even taking out time to adjust the uh, the camera. Uh, it might be being a little overly cocky because we cut it quite close last time. I ended up getting those two on the end tacked in nice. All right. Back on our little angle tip so that we can direct airflow to just where we want it. because we know we're going to need it. We're going to do a quick flip. Get the underbelly. Camera lined up, there we go. A little flux on the underside. Right. 
to a minute mark, so we're getting close. I can't remember if we were this far along at that time or further. As long as we don't have any bridge connections. I think we're going to do all right for timing. Making sure that I'm in view of the camera. time. So I was about to call it. So I might have gotten this one done even faster. As long as we're not off center. I see there's a little bit of a tilt to this HDMI. But is it enough that it would cause a bridge? Because never are they perfectly square. I don't, it's not even possible for these little laser-guided machines to get them that perfect. Because they're going to float around when you're trying to solder and put them where they're supposed to be. I think I'm confident that this made the time frame and that there are no additional issues with it. So I'm calling it. Now let's see if I called it prematurely. Or if I have a 12 minute and 51 second HDMI replace. Again, continuity mode. Let's make sure those are tight. It really doesn't matter, positive, negative, which one I do. I'm just trying to do continuity. So one, that's a ground. That's fine. That's good. We should get no signal there. We should get signal here. That's ground. No signal. No signal, ground, no signal, no signal, ground, no signal, no signal, no signal, no signal, no signal, ground, there, and there. We are good. Okay, so that does the first part of the check. Now we need the second part of the check. And again, this is just for the HDMI replace. There could be some other things going on that haven't been addressed. But I just wanted to show that HDMI replace can be done quickly and properly because I think one of my previous videos, which shows I think a few other things that we did like trace lines and other stuff, but it was three hours long. And I didn't want people to have the sense that it takes three hours to do an HDMI replacement. Now, if you're doing this with, don't want to offend people, but Mickey Mouse 
equipment. And when I use that phrase, I mean, you know, you bought the stuff. Whoops, you couldn't even see any of that. Okay, you bought the stuff at the dollar store. And not really, but it's, you know, it's the cheap knockoff stuff from overseas that just never really works that well and claims to be the best that there ever was invented, but yet it's using 50-year-old technology. You're not going to get good results. And having good equipment doesn't mean it has to be expensive. Now, a lot of the equipment in the soldering industry, they, I mean, this world is treated like medical equipment. They rather sell fewer units for more dollars than sell more units at a lower price. Because I know that some of the stuff I've spent way too much money on has cost them probably nothing to make. But as far as these contacts go, all of these are perfect. They are, we're going to check their bonding now. But they are solidly bonded. There are no bridges. It looks like we got a little bit of a skew here where this side is slightly lower than this side, but it's marginal. It's not enough to actually make a difference. Two things you want to have is you want to be as square as possible without being OCD about it and then you want to be flush because as you saw earlier I was pressing down on this you have to kind of feel and wait for this like this center level and it would be easier to do that if I strip these bare but what I found is that it sometimes makes it hard to get the join so having that bed of solder already there helps to kind of assist in that but that is done that's as good as it needs to be, and that will hold. That will last, well, I would say it would last a lifetime, except people like to take their HDMI ports and shove them in, and then just to make sure for good measure, they give them a wiggle. Or if they get the faintest bit of something not working right, they go to the PlayStation and they take it and they grab it and they wiggle it around, when maybe it was your TV's HDMI port that was the issue. It wasn't this. The other reason that we see that these break is you want to take your game system over to your friend's house. You're going to do a little lane setup and, and have some fun in a multiplayer. I like to do this every now and then with my friends when we get on a Monster Hunter binge. However, there's a way to remove your HDMI, and that is to pull it straight back. Move your console get to where you can see the HDMI port and pull straight back because if you reach around this is not the situation where you want reach arounds but if you reach around to that HDMI through a cabinet and the, wherever you have it stuck and you pull on that with your arm around the backside like you've got your PlayStation in a chokehold and you pull that HDMI you're not going to pull it straight you're going to pull it to the left or to the right depending on which arm you're grabbing it from and when you pull it at an angle, you don't notice it, but you're not pulling straight. You're pulling like this. You're pulling diagonally. And when you do that, it takes this and it bends it. Okay, this is, this is not titanium. It is probably cheap steel. It's thin gauge. It will bend. It will break. The one thing that I will give Sony credit for is if you get shorts and these wires heat up, it's going to debond those pins. But usually... Old school and cheap electronics, if you pop this off, you'd probably snatch some of those pins with it. But I've seen, and as you saw from the one before this, the whole innards of that HDMI was gone, just missing. But all of those uh, contact points were still on the pad. I don't know what allows that to happen, but... I guess to some extent they've built it sturdy. Just to air is to human and we are not easy on our electronics. So if you want to save yourself some grief, if you want to save yourself the cost of an HDMI repair, turn your machine off, look to where you can see the HDMI port, 
and then pull straight back. You should never damage your HDMI if you do it like that every single time. As far as this goes, it's done. Let's go ahead and give it a once over. The parts are missing, nothing's knocked off, everything is good. I've got to test these components before I send it back. In fact, we can go ahead. We can do that now. Last little check that we do is these. And there's a bunch of checks you can do. But these are the only ones that are necessary because if it doesn't work after this, then you're going to take it off. Uh, you're going to go to the back side and you're going to remove that little heat shield. And you're going to start working in that area. If that doesn't fix our issue, then you're going to start looking in this area. And we are good. Nothing on those indicates that they have an issue. So, two repairs and now because we actually took this one out we can now put it back in uh, and I was talking about the battery we have two HDMI repairs completed one was done in just under 15 minutes but had a bridge pin second time around we got even better even with it having this which um, why one went faster than the other, who knows, especially the one, let's call it getting warmed up. Uh, 12 minutes, 51 seconds, completely removed and replaced the HDMI port. If you have any